Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me exactly how do I do YouTube Millionaire, like just editing techniques and stuff like that just in general. So YouTube Millionaire and all my videos, they're all edited in Sony Vegas um, Pro. I'm pretty sure I've got, yeah, 13. There we go, I've got 13. Um, it's not the newest version, but it's the version I use. Um, it's not actually owned by Sony anymore, but let's not get into that. Let's just kind of look at the editing here. So my videos are edited with usually 11 layers in YouTube Millionaire. Now, I'll, I'll go over exactly what everything is here, and yes, as you can see, it's a lot of work. It does take six days to, you know, write the script, record it, collect all the data and stuff. Um, it's a lot of work, okay, to do this. Anyway, so let's go over exactly how everything works. What What is each layer? Why do I have each layer? And there's only three layers of audio, because audio, I don't, it's mainly visual stuff in YouTube Millionaire. Anyway, this is how it works. So at the bottom here, in layer seven, as it's called, I've actually got an image, and this is just the background, the channel tracker image, and I'll actually show you. I've got a folder here, and this is the channel tracker folder, and what you'll notice here, and sorry, this is in 4K, I just can't, I can't show off, like, just to show you here, this display window is in 1080p. So I actually am able to edit and see what I'm editing in the full 1080p quality as I edit. And that is important to me because I need to see if the text is visible and all of that kind of stuff. So that's just how I edit. And um, you probably will be watching this video in 10 years when 4K is the norm as opposed to now and you're using a 1080p model and stuff. But anyway, let's go. Let's keep going. So let's just look at this channel tracker as a little example. So here is a channel tracker. All it is, is it's a 1080p, just a blank, you know, well, let's get this, there it is. It's just a simple PNG file. I made this from scratch myself. Um, it's not based off any other designs. I just kind of designed it myself. Um, and now I can just input data and stuff. So this is all an image. This is not editable text here. You have to use Adobe Fireworks if you want to be able to edit this. Um, and yeah, then I can just type in all the stats I want and all of that. Easy peasy, I just had to design it once and, you know, it's designed. It hasn't really changed much since the first episode. You know, I've moved some stuff around. But this is basically an image that is the bottom layer in YouTube Millionaire. So you've just got this, this blank um, image channel tracker with nothing on it. So let's just, let's just go bit by bit here and just kind of look at how YouTube Millionaire is kind of constructed. So I'm just going to add a new video layer here and we're just going to put this in here just so we can see, okay, so this is what YouTube Millionaire is. If it was just one layer, it would just be this image. It wouldn't really be that exciting, would it? So we're going to add another layer here. So let's talk about how I make things light up. So as you know, when I talk about certain channels, let's go somewhere such as OS First Timer here. I'm talking about OS First Timer, and because I'm talking about OS First Timer, OS First Timer lights up. So how do I do that? Well, that magic is done with my layer six here. So I'll show you how I make this. I'm going to make this from scratch. I'm going to. I'm not just going to copy paste it. I'm going to make that from scratch. Let's show how you do that. So what I do is I go over here to Media Generators. Then I go to Solid Color. And see this white here? Just drag white over. Now, just in itself, this is not going to work out well at all because this white layer is a massive layer of white that just overlays that image. So it's like, well, that wouldn't be very good. Let's talk about OS First Timer. Nothing happened on OS First Timer. Yeah, that would not be good at all. So we aren't going to do it like that. So <laughs> that's not how it works. If I want to talk about OS First Timer, I have to go to this little button here, this pan button, whatever you call it. What's it called? It won't tell. Okay, event pan crop. There we go. So I'm going to click on mask here. Here's mask. And what I do is I draw, and I only have to do this once. No, just the first time I do this. Um, so I haven't done this since episode one. So I basically draw kind of a mask that covers. So let's say I was talking about OS first timer. Um, that's a little bit too big on the side. So let's just make that a little bit smaller. So all this is, is a layer of white. Legitimately, it's, it's nothing special. It's just a layer of white. Um, <laughs> you, there's a lot more um, playing around with the sizing and stuff, though, but there we go. It's just a layer of white that's placed over, you know, so you can see what I'm talking about. I might make that just a, a tinsy wincy bit smaller. There we go. That should be all good. So that's there, that's there, that's there, and that's good. Okay, but the thing about it is, let's talk about OS First Timer. 
um, or OS X. <laughs> let's just pretend I said it in YouTube Millionaire. Now let's talk about OS First Timer. And it just appears like that. So that wouldn't be good. So we've kind of got it focused on OS First Timer now. But what we need to do is we need to put it down the transparency. So, and yeah, you can keep moving it around after this. I might make that a little bit thicker. And that, you see... I could play around with this for a long time. But anyway, let's just keep it like that. So we're here, we're talking about OS First Timer, and I want it to fade when it talks to OS First Timer, so I want it to... See, fading, not that slow, though. That is way too slow. Um, let's say about here. So let's talk about OS First Timer and see how OS First Timer lights up. There we go. So that's how that works. It's simply a white, transparent thing that appears over the word OS First Timer. That's it. Um, no, nothing special about that. Um, see, same thing. It's just a white, transparent thing. Um, what I'll even do is I'll delete that one. There's the real one. See, same thing. It's just this one's a little bit thicker. That's why I use it. So there we go. Let's talk about OS First Timer. And that's literally all it is. Let's talk about OS First Timer. And it just fades up like that. Now, if I want to talk to a, like, talk about a different channel, let's say I'm here and I'm like, okay, let's now talk about the next channel. So all I do is I copy this one and I paste it here um, and I have this one fade out. So let's talk about OS first time it fades in and then let's talk about, and as I'm saying, let's talk about that fades out and then we get into the new one. Now, this isn't going to be OS first time, but this next one is going to be let's talk about how to quickly. And all I have to do is I've clicked on this little pan crop thing here and I just simply have to, using the arrow keys, move it down to how to quickly. So there we go. Simple. Let's talk about OS first timer. That's lit up. And then time goes on. Let's talk about how to quickly. And then how to quickly is lit up. That's really simple. That's how that works. So as you can see, this is just an image and I'm just overlaying a transparent white thing. I, you know, it could be dimmer than that. It can be as bright or as dim as you want. But I've just got it, um, the opacity at 34% because that's just personally what I like. You can have it at what you want if you're going to do something similar to YouTube Millionaire. So yeah, that is that. Now let's talk about how I get this little TV working and the text here. It's really simple. It's really, <laughs> there's nothing really that special about it. If I just go here, we're going to need to add another layer here. And we're going to go to soft shadow text because this is what I pretty much use in all my videos. Um, and then I just say, um, what video is this on how to quickly? How to quickly fry an egg. <laughs> I, I don't actually have a video of how to frickly, you, you know what I'm talking about, fry an egg. Um, so all this is here is under the video you'll see and I'll just go back so you actually know what I'm talking about here you'll see when I'm talking about a video I've just got some text there that talks about it so let's have a little look here um, I'll make the font go down to about 15 is that the no smaller than that 10 oh, I think it's <laughs> let's cheat here let's see what font size I use because I actually don't remember it is 7. Oh, okay, so that's smaller than I thought. So it's font size 7. And then I just say, oh, it got um, 150,402 views. There we go. And then I just have to place it here. But the thing is, I only have to place this once in one, you know, one of my videos. Um, that A and N don't look good at all. What is going on here? I've probably got a different font here. So let's just have a little look. Yes, I use that font that I can't really pronounce the name of. So that's all that is. That is really just a bit of text, and I'm just gonna fix that up because I don't like the way that looks. Just a bit of text that is, you know, there. And that's, there's nothing really that special about it. So here we go, I'm talking about, you know, on OS First Timer, Flight Simulator here. Sorry, I've just, I've, I've refined it from, you know, I sat there choosing the text and stuff, and I thought, oh, okay, this text looks best. So I'm just, that's why I'm taking it from the real thing, just so you can see how this is constructed here. So let's talk about OS First Time at Now, what happens? This appears, and the text fades in. The only thing left here that you guys are missing is the actual display. And that's really not hard. That's just the, you know, video being displayed there. So... When I want to go, you know, talk about something else, let's say, okay, now let's talk about something on OSFTV logs. I literally just copy the text from here, paste it here, and just change it to the name of the OSFTV logs video. How to quickly cheat in your math test. So 
you know, that's all I that's all I have to do. It's really not, you know, that I usually use capital letters, though I don't do, you know, small letters when I have titles. But you, you get the picture. So it's, once you've got it set up, it just fades to the next thing. It's pretty easy. See? Mum tries out Microsoft Flight Simulator X. We're talking about OS First Timer. Then it fades into the next thing. And if I wanted the next channel, simply copy and paste that. And now we are talking about OSFT Vlogs. And, yep, use the arrow keys to do that. And then we start typing what we want here for the um, OSFT Vlog. Uh, flying to... The you get the picture. We're not even going to bother typing it there. But you see what I mean? It's a very simple... It fades to each thing. you just got to make sure these match up so it looks as smooth as possible. So that's really that strategy. Now let's go into the video. How do I do this? So you're seeing here that this video is just taking up just this little screen. Now that's not hard to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, just in case you don't know how to do it. But really, like this is something a lot of people would usually know. So let's try and get something, uh, some large footage here. Where is the... I like that kookaburra footage. Here we go. So let's say this bit here, we want this, and we're going to add another layer here. We want this bit here, um, and that's going to have audio. I didn't add that. That was just automatic. Usually, um, if I've got it, you know, minimized though in their small window, I usually mute the audio by putting it down. So that's just how I do that. Anyway, let's say here we're talking about OSFT vlogs now. Obviously here... I make sure that the fade in, you know, is the exact same as the other three layers. However, here, something you'll notice, what I do is I actually shrink down the size. Basically, all I've done is I've just clicked on the pan crop thing, and then I hold shift. I mean, not shift. There we go. I hold control as I pull this. Now, if I don't hold control, it gets all messy. So that's why you want to let me control Z that. That's why you want to hold control to keep everything, you know, the aspect ratio right and all of that stuff. Otherwise, you can just get it messed up. So I held control. Now I just click and drag this and I place it in the TV. Um, you just have to get it about the right size. There we go. Um, I'm not really going to bother trying too hard here. Now, I don't have to do this every time. Every time I want to get a video into there, I don't have to, you know, do that what I've just done, like stretch it out. Let's say it was full screen. I'm going to restore that. Let's say I wanted this. All I do is I copy and paste it from my previous thing. So this is in the small screen. Now this was done in uh, YouTube Millionaire episode one, me just placing it in there. So there's just a slight black border around there. That's what looks good. I find, you know, you've got the white and then the slight black border. And all I do is simply see this copy and paste event attributes. And that simply puts it in the TV for me, so that is all good, you know. Um, obviously, though, I mute it because I don't want the audio in that, you see. And let's say here, you know how I often actually have the videos um, where you see it's small. Now, what you'll notice is here, it gets big, see that? that? That's really simple to do. All I have to do there is I split the video, so I split it, and now I want it to get big. So I just click on this, and then I click restore, and it's big. So it's small, and then it's big. But usually when it goes big, I want there to be audio, and that's all I do. I just flip the audio switch up. So here we go. We're talking about how to quickly, onto OSF TV logs. Here we go. It's small, and then boom, it's big, and then you hear the audio. So that's how that works. It's very, very simple. Um, you know, nothing tricky at all. <laughs> that's just how it works. Okay, now let's talk about some other things. Um, now this one, don't really worry about this. What this is at the top here is a special layer. I put this over all my videos because sometimes what I'll do is I'll render a video. So for example, I might render an OS First Timer video or something like that. And then I'll chuck that OS First Timer video back into here. Now, just because of my render settings, so I've done an OS First Timer video, I want to talk about it on, a, you know, YouTube Millionaire. Now, typically, I actually drag in the VEG files. So when I'm editing, if I want to talk about, let's say something I did on Astral Phaser, let's say I want to chat in, you know, put the chat nine, talk about that. I actually, you can actually drag in straight, you know, a VEG file and have it as simply only two layers. Even though this is more than two layers, 
I can just have it and use it as if it's two layers. The only problem with that is if I drag in too many VEG files, uh, which I do often, uh, it can cause a lot of problems. Um, the, okay, the good thing about doing it like this is there's no re-rendering. You're actually accessing the raw files as opposed to, you know, rendering it, then putting it, because then there's quality loss. Um, that's a good thing about simply dragging a VEG, and I do that a lot. But if you drag in a VEG, like, let's say I do a YouTube Millionaire episode, and I drag in... Now, let's talk about the previous YouTube Millionaire video, and I drag that in. That means all of my contents here... Let's go Project Media. All of this Project Media you see here, oh my goodness, all that will be, you know, inserted and goes into the next... Oh. It's just, just trust me, it's a nightmare. And it slows down Sony Vegas so much. So that's why you don't want to put in any VEGs. Now, what this thing here is, is if I actually, on YouTube Millionaire, drag in something like, for example, what is something that is legitimately, where do I talk about YouTube Millionaire? Let's find that bit. So somewhere here I talk about YouTube Millionaire, Shift OS. And, okay, yeah, here we go. I'm talking about YouTube Millionaire here. This, I have not dragged in the VEG file, you know. Because if I did that, that would be all of Episodes 8 stuff in here, and that would be a nightmare. So this is actually the rendered file. I've rendered the YouTube Millionaire Episode 8, then dragged the rendered video into here. Now, that does a few things. If you're using the, you know, uh, what do you call it? What do I render this in? I'll just go show you what I render this in. If you use my render settings, customize template, you'll see I use the X... 264 codec, which is fantastic for compressing while keeping great quality. Um, I've got extra configurations going on in there. But anyway, the thing about that is when you, if I render this and then put it back into a Sony Vegas file, and then I try to render that, it's going to completely mess up and think, oh, that doesn't need to be re-rendered. And then you'll see heads popping in. Oh my God. It just, it's, it's a nightmare. You never want to, especially with this codec, render a video put it back in the timeline in another video and then render it again because then you'll get all this corruption. Oh, this, the video will just go nuts. It just it doesn't recompress and stuff. So what this is, this is my special little secret weapon against that, which means that I can re-render stuff um, without there being a problem. All it is is it's actually a full stop at size, font size 4. I thought I made that font size 1. And it's simply put up into the corner of the screen here. In fact, you know what? We're going to recreate it. It is so easy to make. And this actually saves a lot of headaches when it comes to re-rendering. Simply drag on text, put a full stop, make it size, whoops, make, okay, well, size 4. That's what it wants to go to. Um, and as you can see, it is visible right now. Um, well... Oh, wait, there we go. I, well, I wasn't in it. It is visible right now. You can see this little dot. But what I do is I actually make its visibility go really, really low. And you're wondering, wait, well, why are you doing this? This basically, and you just put the opacity to about one and put it up in the corner of the screen. You can't even see it anyway. But the point is, you can't see this. It doesn't affect the video. It's not visible to the naked eye. But just dragging that across your videos allows you to... It does increase the render time, so it does take long to render when you have this safety precaution here. But it means that if I re-render a video, there are no problems. I can have a re-rendered video in here, and it won't start messing up. What it does is it stops Sony Vegas from just going, you know what, let's, let's put this in action. Let's... We, we are going to show this off. Um, let's say I've got a few things in here that were rendered and I haven't put in my archive yet. So we're going to do a little example here of why you don't put rendered videos in here. Let's say I put episode 6 of Gaming Through the Ages in here. Um, I put in... Uh, what else are we going to... Let's put in this inspect element tutorial thing. Um, and I'll just get that little bit of it. And then I will get, and yes, Sony Vegas does run a bit slow when I do this. And then we'll get this bit of Frogger. And I will delete. See how slow Sony Vegas is running because of these, um, when I'm dragging in a video that's already been rendered. And so, oh my gosh, it just becomes a slow laggy mess. Okay, so here we go. Here are these two files here. Let's say I drag them over each other because that's how you do a transition, right? Um, and I'm just going to... Paste this a few times. Now, let's just say you're transitioning like this. Now, watch this. It is a nightmare. I just want to render this, just this portion. So, I've clicked up here. I've 
made a little render loop here, meaning I don't want to render the whole video, I just want to render this little portion here. I'm going to go up, we're going to render this, and I'm going to show you, this is why I have that secret weapon at the top, to prevent this from happening, um, which happen, which, you know, YouTube millionaire is very prone to this kind of thing, that's why I have my secret weapon. So let's just say I call this um, thingy, I don't know, let's just call this thingy. I don't know why I'm calling it thingy, and I want to render the loop region only, which just means just this area here. Now, see the word here that appears, no recompression required, unless I'm doing the transition, no recompression required. Now, what that has done is this is why I use my secret weapon. W watch this video now that it rendered. Ever wanted to quickly change the text on a web? I just want to show you something. My little brother... Um, Ever wanted to quickly now, did you see that? On a web? I just want to show you something. My little brother... Um, now, as you can see, there was some, you know, bad, you know, mess up there. Um, now, because there wasn't actually much movement, it wasn't much of a problem. But in certain videos, it can get a lot worse than that. A lot worse. Just trust me. What you just saw there was nothing to compare to how bad the um, compression thing can get. So, in order to fix that and not get that issue... I just drag my secret secret weapon over it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling it my secret weapon, but here we go. Here is my secret weapon. Now let's re-render that with the secret weapon. So yeah, you just want this secret weapon over your whole video. That will prevent you getting any issues. So this is now thingy too. And this will show you that I will now, and yes, it does take longer to render when you do it this way, but this will stop those awful, you know, where you saw me kind of overlap, and it was like, what? What is that weird corruption that's going on? Now, let's open that. Now, watch this. Ever wanted to quickly change the text on a web? I just want to show you something. My little brother... Um, Ever wanted no to corruption. The text Perfect. See, that is why My I use brother, that secret um, weapon. I don't think many people actually know about that. Um, basically, what it does is it forces um, recompression to occur because of the fact that you've got... Um, you know, a little full stop up there, even though you can't really even notice it or see it, but because it's there, it forces it to recompress it anyway, um, rather than just ignoring it. And that way, I don't have problems with Sony Vegas and weird corruption and stuff during rendering. So that is a fantastic solution to that. Um, now let's talk about something else that a lot of people wonder how I do. Um... It is the scrolling effect. So let's just say I say, uh, oh, it's first time I got a certain amount of videos this month. Videos. And as you can see, it's scrolling now. Just note that does look pretty bad. But basically it scrolls um, very, very smoothly when it's not got all this stuff all over it. But let, let's talk about how I do that. So it scrolls, oh, it's first time I got this amount of videos and it, you know, goes down like that. Well, what I basically do, this is how I do this. So let's just pretend we're doing it here. Um, so I'm going to pop onto YouTube here. Let's just hurry up and get in onto their actual YouTube action here. So let's just say here that you're here and you want to actually... What? Victor Tran Challenge, not on my channel. Cool Koala Gaming is really making that clear. So let's say Jazzy is watching Animorphs right now. She loves it. Anyway, what I do here is I do print screen and... You're wondering, whoa, whoa, print screen, what just happened? I don't know if this is picking up on the recorder or not, but I use something called green screen, which means that I can simply click, drag, and kind of draw the part of the screen that I want, you know, done. Um, anyway, I've just done it. I don't know if you saw that or not. I'm going to save that in... Let's just call this the... Ah, oh, come on. I just... Where did that go? <laughs> that was bad. Okay, so let's, let's just call this the... Uh, in a new folder, fake 10, because this is not really the episode 10. Um, I won't even bother naming that. Okay, so let's see how we actually do the scrolling effect. So YouTube Millionaire fake 10, here we go. So we've done this, and we want to, say, put a scroll to this page, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that right there, and I'm going to actually drag that into my timeline. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So, yada, 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 I'm talking about YouTube Millionaire. Now, by itself, if you put it in there, there's no scroll. Um, and because it's, you know, higher than 1920 by 1080, it's got a bit more um, bottom to it here. <laughs> what do I call it? A bit more height to it. There we go. Um, what I'd actually do here is click on pan crop. Now, what I do is I get it just like I drag this bit here to make it so it fills up the whole screen. So, I've chopped off the bottom of it. There we go. And there's 
Hopefully no black edges. Uh, let me just make that 1080.0. There's definitely no black edges now. So as you can see, if you played this, it would just pop to that and there would be no movement with the bottom chopped off. See, this is like a little viewfinding window here. You see this and it shows you what we can see. We can't see the rest of it. We can just see this. So I'm going to now put fades to both sides of this. And if I want to do a scroll, I simply see this bit. That's the beginning of the timeline. Over here is the end of the timeline. I'm going to click at the end of the timeline. So that's like the beginning here matches up with the beginning of the video here. The end here matches up with the end here. I just add a keyframe. And in this keyframe, by the end of it, I'm just using the arrow keys now. Oops, wrong direction. <laughs> Let's go scroll out so it goes a bit faster. I've got my finger on the down arrow key and I want it to buy the end of it. And that's a little viewfinder window by the last keyframe to be like this. Now, if you do it like this, it's not going to have the exact scroll effect I want. See, it's scrolling. But the way I do it is I don't quite do it like that. I actually do one more step. I hold shift as I click on these two things. I right click and instead of a linear, I do a smooth scroll. So that means it starts off slow and then it gets faster in the middle and it, it kind of comes to a stop at the end. Um, if I actually extend that so you can see it, this is what it kind of looks like, a smooth scroll. So let's say it doesn't have a scroll, then it does have a scroll and see how it kind of eases into it and then stop. See, that's kind of what I like. Now this, that's how you do scrolling. <laughs> Simply, yeah, um, yeah, and if you wanted to say, you know what? I want it to, f you know, scroll down really quickly to the bottom. See how I just moved that there. Um, and then once it gets to the bottom here, so it's at the bottom, I then want it to focus on, let's say we want to focus on these two announcements from Cool Koala Gaming. Um, I just simply zoom it in here. It automatically added a keyframe there. And I want it to, yeah, kind of zoom into that. So if I do it like that, and let's just make sure they are all smooth, yep. It will do a three-step thing. It'll scroll down and zoom into Cool Koala Gaming. There we go. Just like that. Um, so that is how that works. It's pretty easy. <laughs> um, not much work to that. Um, yeah, that is that. Um, next up, let's see what else we've got here. What is something else in YouTube Millionaire that I do that it's kind of like, how do you do that? I just don't get it. I mean, you've just basically seen everything. I've shown there's really not much techniques going on in YouTube Millionaire. Um... Let's see if I can find any other techniques here. Oh, the arrow. I don't even need to talk about that. Um, as you can see here, I zoomed in onto Rain's name um, at this point in the video. And then I've just got an arrow that overlaid and just appeared over it. There's <laughs> no, no strategy, just a layer of video with an arrow on it. <laughs> nothing, nothing special about that. Uh, this is something I want to talk about. Uh, and it's a lot simpler than you think. So let's just copy and paste this. Uh, where is it? We'll put it in here. I might just delete that for now. Okay, here we go. So you see a laptop kind of bounce down and then that bounce. How do I do the bounce? Um, there's actually nothing special about the way I do that bounce. Nothing at all. Okay, all that is, we're going to go here. This is exactly how I do the scrolling. Um, what I am going to do there is I'm going to chop this off so it's a bit easier to see, <laughs> otherwise it's a little bit hard to see. Now as you can see here, I have it start off out of view. So the view here is under, so okay actually you know what, let's, let's recreate this. I'm going to do it in front of your eyes, we're going to delete everything and we're just going to restore here. So let's say from scratch, how do I do that bounce thing? So by itself there's no bounce, but let's say you want to add a little bit of a bounce. First of all, I want it to start off from outside of camera. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock it so it won't move side to side, so it just moves up and down. So I've just clicked that little locking arrow there. So I want it to start off where it's under. So I put the view so it, we're looking above where this YouTube Millionaire thing is. Then what I want is I want it to come into view. However, when it comes into view here, I want it to go a little bit too high up. And then... I want it, the next scene, I want it to come back down into like the appropriate view by the third frame. Let's say about there by the third frame. And then what I do is by itself, this doesn't look good because there's no, look, see, 
It's not fantastic, um, but you will want to add a smooth animation and actually probably drag these out a bit because I've got them a bit close together. And then, boom. Um, that was a little bit slow on the coming back side, so let's put that down. Eh... It's okay, it's okay. It's not fantastic. It's not as good as my other one. Um, it takes a lot of tweaking, so you'll sit down here and you'll kind of get it so it looks, you know, good. Um, anyway, so that is that. That's how I do the bounces. Same with the laptop. That's just a bounce just in the other direction. Um, at the start, it just kind of goes down. See how it's, it's kind of this long bit here where it kind of falls down and then it does that bounce up and down. That's all it is. And then that overlays that and that's why you kind of see them at the same time going up. There we go. So that's that. Um, yeah, pretty easy stuff. Now, one more thing I do want to show you before we... Actually, two more things. Let's say I want to change over from stats um, channel tracker. Ignore all my naming conventions here. They are a little bit odd. But anyway, here we go. Let's say I want to change over. I'm talking about this, and you know how I do that flip effect? Not this, because that's just a fade effect. But let's say I want to do that flip effect. That's a really easy effect. You just go to Transitions, 3D Blinds, and see this spin here? I just drag this spin on, and it just does it for me. There's... Oh, what? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was confused there for a sec, but there we go. There's the spin. Um, if I wanted a slower spin, I can drag it out a bit more, so there we go, there is a spin, it's pretty simple. Um, it doesn't look as good as the rendered video because it's a bit, you know, it's unrendered right now, but that's what the spin looks like and that's how easy it is. I simply drag these videos on top of each other and just drag over a spin. Um, that's just the effect I chose. Um, and when I do the spin, you will notice that I have got a special little sound effect here that, I don't know if I made it myself or I found it from the internet, but this is just a sound effect, just to give the spin some life to it. I just place that there so the spin occurs. See? That's the spin. That's that's all there is to it. See? Nothing, nothing really, you know, major. It's just a sound effect placed under that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, I'm going to show you one last thing I do. Um, this isn't really specific to YouTube Millionaire. I do this in a lot of things, but it's often needed to use, often needed to be used in YouTube Millionaire. Um, let's say I have a video. Um, let's say where Michael's talking here. So we'll pop this in. This is Dev Time Lapse. Um, and let's copy a little bit from where I talk. Now you'll notice that when I talk, hey, it's now time to check out how many... Um, and when Michael talks, there is a huge, huge difference. Hey there, everyone. Time to check out in it, like, you know, audio, what you can hear. So let's just say, um, in fact, let's get a bit where he's talking. Just went on between. I mean, Michael, and welcome to another development. Okay, let's just, let's just grab it from there. Okay, there we go. There's my audio, there's his audio. Now, already you can see. My audio is going higher up, just the quality of my voice. It's not Michael, so it's not like Michael has a, a, a problematic voice box. It's just that his microphone isn't recording as good as mine. And now I'm suffering from annoying drilling in the background, so just sorry if you can hear some drilling. But anyway, what we've got here is my audio and Michael's audio. Now just have a little listen to how it kind of, um, you know, fades in here. You, well, not how it fades in, but you know, how the audio is different. Using cash my channel's got this month. Hey there everyone, I'm Michael and welcome to another development time. Now, see there is, his audio is a lot lower. Now, number one, this is the first fix I always apply to get his audio up. Now, obviously, I could just put my audio down. I could just drag that and go, okay, my audio's down. Channel's got this month. Hey there everyone. Put it down a little bit more. Got this month. Hey there, everyone. And then our audios are about equal. However, I don't do that because this particular audio I've got, this is the audio I like in my videos. Uh, so if you've got a bad quality um, speakers that don't go up very loud, you can still hear my videos. Um, that's what I like. So I like my videos to have a loud. It's not something where you have to put the volume down a bunch. You know what I mean like that. So what I do to fix his audio is I go over here, click this, and there is a little volume thing. So I add that little volume thing. Now, I can just keep it as that volume thing and, you know, just make his audio a little bit louder by dragging that up. But before I do, something I always do with my videos is I go to Switches, Normalize. 
that just see how that made it a little bit louder it just makes sure that the loudest audio touches the bottom and top lines here so it, I, I do that with all my audio just trust me just equalize it <laughs> um, anyway um, so I do that his audio is a bit louder but I also drag up this volume here of just his video so that just applies to this because I've only applied the volume to this video and that effect cash my channel's got this month Hey there everyone, I'm Michael and Um, I'll put it up to about six. Using cash my channel's got this month. Hey there everyone, I'm Michael and welcome to another development time. Now, that's great, that is fantastic. Audio is about the same. Uh, Michael's audio there is a little bit muffly. Now, I don't usually bother with this. I don't go into the extremes. Let me just click up here. There are some audio effects and, you know, special filters and stuff you can apply to the audio. And I have done this before but I don't really bother anymore, um, unless it's seriously, um, someone's got really bad audio. Um, I apply an effect, I can't even remember what effect I use, I fiddle with it a little bit, and I'm able to get rid of all the black background, like, hiss, that shh sound to it, I forgot how I do it though, I haven't done it for a while. But anyway, that is about it, you have seen everything I do on YouTube Millionaire, those are all the techniques, there's nothing you've missed, you've really, you've seen everything, there's, um, uh, let's have a little look at the Patreon panel thingy. Bind. Here are the See, that's all it is. That's actually the same as a spin sound. Bind. Here are uh, In fact, that's the same as YouTube the Millionaire um, when it pops up. See, I actually, as you can see, the Patreon panel is based off YouTube Millionaire. But yeah, that's the exact same, you know, up and down bounce thing. So yeah, you have seen uh, everything. You don't really need to see anymore. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um... By the way, images work the same when I've got the Victor Tran challenge. It's a full 1080p thing. I just copy it from a previous video, um, right-click, you know, copy and paste event attributes, and then it instantly puts any image I want into this box. Only had to arrange it once, and then the rest is done for you. So, you have seen everything. I hope you enjoyed this video that talks about, you know, how YouTube Millionaire works, the editing techniques in that. I might maybe do another one of these videos if you guys like this. Maybe how I do, uh, I don't know, Astral Phaser certain techniques and stuff like that if you want to learn how to do that but yeah hope you enjoy this video guys and i will see you in the next one and yeah um if you can't really watch it properly in 4k uh put it on your 4k tv if you've got a 4k tv those are a little bit more common than 4k monitors and if you don't have a 4k tv you can try and watch this in 1080p but it's going to be very small also do note here my taskbar is not that full. That's my taskbar, see? Look at that. Just that. There's all this blank space. When I do an OS first timer video, I put it down to 1080p, and that's why my taskbar looks full. You see, because all of this comes together and it just touches each other. So yeah, that is that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next episode of... Um, what is this? <laughs> of how I do my chart. I don't know. It's not even a real thing. Anyway, see ya.